Lego Harry Potter is back with a brand new Hogwarts castle layout and this one looks incredibly promising. After multiple years of a very place set kid friendly version of a Hogwarts castle, the Lego designers have turned right back around to a very accurate to the screen detailed version of a Hogwarts castle. And the first section of this new layout is something we haven't really seen before and that is the boathouse. This is set 76426 Hogwarts castle boathouse which retails for 38 US dollars, 70 Australian and 32 Great British pounds and contains 350 pieces as well as 5 minifigures. Since this is also a new Hogwarts castle, we don't really know too much about the layout besides the things that they are teasing in the box and the instruction manual. With these sets being a lot more screen accurate, it also means that we brought back the grey roofs, which I am so excited about because my main thing with the Lego set is that I want it to be very, very screen accurate. Starting off with our minifigures though, we have Professor McGonagall and she is actually an updated version that now features arm printing and I really love this updated McGonagall. The differences are incredibly subtle and for the most part the pattern on her clothes is very very similar however they did actually update the brooch on her neck and then of course the arm printing which is something that I really did not notice until I built this set which made me very very excited. She comes along with a 2 by 3 printed tile with all of the students that are included in this set and it just blows my mind that Lego was able to upgrade what I considered to be one of if not the best Lego Harry Potter minifigure. Next up we have Harry Potter. As always he comes with his classic young face and looks absolutely adorable. We also have the return of Hermione Granger which features that new technique that they've been doing where they include the troll skirt piece and some triple molded legs, which I'm a really big fan of. We also have Neville Longbottom, complete with a new face print, which is absolutely adorable. And last but certainly not least, Dean Thomas, who has a different skin tone to his previous versions, which is quite interesting. Overall, I'm really happy with the minifigure selection. I think it was really generous of them too to give us five minifigures, even though for the most part, they just got to use the same torso and legs over and over again. First up, let's talk about these two small bolts, which are significantly smaller than the single molded piece that was featured in the 28 18 Great Hall. Both of these boats are brick built from the ground up and contain a little lantern on the very front. There's also six open studs, but you can really only fit minifigures on four of them. Whilst we don't really see too much of the boathouse in the movies, I was a really big fan of the Order of the Phoenix game, so that is where a lot of my kind of knowledge about what the boathouse looks like comes from. And as far as I'm concerned, this design is fantastic. I really like how this build incorporates a lot of the rock work and the water that is featured around Hogwarts Castle in such a small scale. The addition of the translucent blue cheese slopes is a really big win in my eyes and I also like how they incorporated a couple of little sea animals including this little flying fish. Around the outside as well there are a couple of little mushrooms as well as these tiny little brick built trees that are using those fern pieces inverted which by the looks of things is going to be a consistent build technique throughout the rest of the Hogwarts castle sections. On the rock work on the right hand side there is a little perch with an owl set on the top which of course is meant to represent Hedwig and then underneath you can actually pull out this rock section which clips in and it reveals Trevor the Toad which is such a really cute reference. Now for a set that is intended as a playset, there is really not a lot of things to interact with and there's also not a lot of space to stick minifigures. There is enough to make a little pose or set up a scene, but I really feel like this set lends itself towards the more adult fans of LEGO, which considering a lot of Harry Potter's fan base is adult, I think this set is really good in that regard. In terms of play, you can back the boats into the inside of the boathouse, but only one can fit in at a time and there is also some oars that are hanging up on the inside. However, since they're not clipped in, they can very easily be knocked out. If you look at the back of the box, something you might have noticed is this little collectible portrait sticker. Similarly to the chocolate frogs, these new wave of sets contain a randomized tile that is unique to each set. But unlike last time, they're printed shield pieces and in my eyes they look way better and have a lot more detail. They also don't feel secondary to the set as a lot of the time they're actually built into the model itself. So for instance, at the very top if you slide this piece out, there is a little collectible portrait that can kind of sit through the window of the boathouse. The one that was included in my copy of the set was Helga Hufflepuff and I think she looks absolutely adorable. Now in terms of the set that is pretty much it. There is only one thing left that I really want to talk about with this set and that is these two clipped bricks at the very back. Now you could clip the oars to them if you really wanted to however these clips to me scream expansion. With all of the talk about building the biggest and most detailed Hogwarts ever it definitely screams to me that this boathouse is intended to be clipped onto other sections of the castle. And while we don't really see the students getting off the boats in the movie I think this is a really nice piece for a shelf and also is a set that is super expensive but you still have a little piece of Hogwarts. But even though it is cheap compared to a lot of other Lego Harry Potter sets, for its price point this set feels like it's really really pushing it in my eyes. I really like the design and I really like the minifigures but for 38 US dollars this set feels like I'm being ripped off in a way. In my eyes there is a lot of beauty but there is not a lot of value especially when you pitted it up against last year's Black Lake set at a very similar price point. And a large portion of that is simply because of how small this model is. The 
lot of the pieces are packed into this really condensed build and while it looks incredible it just felt me left wanting more for my money. And considering this is our third version of a Hogwarts castle in the last couple of years it is a really big ask for a lot of people to run out and go and collect a brand new system. This is also a system that I think would work really nicely with the 2018 to 2020 range of Hogwarts castle sets and while it doesn't have those Technic brick connections I feel like could be displayed alongside it and match really really nicely. If you're like me and you want a display friendly looking Hogwarts castle I definitely recommend picking this set up however I would not do it at this current price point. For a build this size that price point is way too steep in my eyes and unless you are buying this in order to get some sort of additional Harry Potter promotion I would hold off on it. This soft reboot of Harry Potter makes me really excited so let me know what you think about it down in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to my channel to check out the rest of my Lego Harry Potter reviews and until next time guys I'll see you later.